large, isn't it? Well, it has to be in order to bully all those poor defenseless hatchbacks, sedans and mini SUVs out there. But the Fortuner is a lot more than just that. You see, it is a direct descendant. In fact, it is the Hilux in the international market. And that makes it a very, very capable off-roader. But today, we are talking about Legendo. How is it different? For starters, it only comes in 4x2, but is more expensive than the standard Fortuner. Why? Well, that's what we're here to find out. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe to the Top Gear Mag India channel and press the bell icon to receive all notifications of upcoming videos. Anyway, let's get cracking. First, let's get the important details out of the way. Up front, you'll notice the heavily redesigned front grille and those funky looking quad LED headlamps and DRLs. The sequential indicators sit low on the bumper giving off a more premium feel. The 18-inch alloy wheels are specific to the Legendary variant and then around the back, the tail lights and other subtle additions make for a more well-rounded look overall. On the inside, the Fortuner Legendary gets ventilated front seats, ambient lighting, dual-tone interiors, a wireless phone charger, a new 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system and a USB port for the second row passengers. But there is still no sunroof which can be a bummer for people looking for a more stylish and good looking Fortuna. Let's begin our day with the Legender with a spot of off-roading. A little disclaimer though, this is what city slickers like to refer to as off-roading, so bear that in mind. Now that off-roading patch was quite fun but we have to get out on the tarmac to see what the new Fortuner is like. So first impressions are pretty good, Toyota have done quite a job at upgrading the Fortuner specifically in the engine department. It has the same 2.8 litre 4 cylinder diesel engine as before but is up on power and torque significantly and that power can be felt here behind the wheel especially when you press down on the sport button and go. Now, because this is a body on frame SUV, let's just say the handling is not exciting, but it is neutral. And if you're driving down a highway in a straight line, this thing will do it all day long without a single hitch. Yes, when you are going around corners, there is a bit of body roll and there is a bit of bobbing at very high speeds. But if you're driving sedately, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Toyota have done an excellent job also with the ride comfort, which is definitely better than before. It rides a lot better on smooth tarmac and even off-road, which is how it should be actually. Now I know we've already spoken about all the changes on the new Fortuner, but I have to say it's still a very nice place to be in. Yes, it does look all a little dated and there are those little Toyota bits like the digital clock from the 80s. But other than that, seat comfort, especially at the front with the ventilated seats, is quite good. Other Keisha comforts like wireless charging, auto dimming mirror are also quite handy. What do we know and what have we learned? Now we know that the Fortuner is a reliable and robust SUV, one which has a global presence. But where does that leave the Legender? To put it simply, we feel it's an SUV for the city dweller, one who wants their Fortuner to be, well, Legendary. <laughs> 